J.P. Baez ready to get things underway. The kicker for Thornton Academy, Hunter Temple back deep for the Bulldogs. And it will be Temple from his six-yard line. We're underway in the Class A State Championship game. Liam Heiger, number 78, Hunter Bedreau, the senior linebacker, number 44, made the stop. Second down and nine for the Bulldogs. They bring two out wide here to the near side. Thurston the handoff. That's McGowan lost the football. Who's got it? The Trojans say they have it, and they do. Well, this is not a good start here for Portland. Only a one-yard gain on first down, but this is almost disastrous. Watch his ball carrier on his right arm. He gets it spun and twisted right around. Didn't get the defensive player's number, but a great job coming off the edge there for Thornton Academy. Got to his right arm. The ball was kind of low and outside. Ripped up through, punched it out. Big turnover early for the Trojans. The field goal unit in right now, and they've got a guy who can hit this, J.P. Baez. A 37-yard attempt for Baez, the senior. Trying to draw first blood for the Trojans. Kick is up. And the kick is good. A 37-yard field goal from Baez, and Thornton Academy takes advantage of the fumble and they lead 3-0. Well, good job on the snap and the hold on that on the wet turf. We've seen a couple of bad snaps here early on in the game from Thornton, obviously, the one that went over the top of Benoit's head that he was able to corral back in. But take a look at this field goal here. Good job corralling in. A little bit of a high snap, but got it down in time. 37 yards is a pretty impressive field goal for Maine high school football, and especially in these conditions. Not much going on on the Coastal Auto Parts scoreboard here in this contest. First down and 10 for the Bulldogs. Jones out of the Wildcat. He can throw this, and he will. He's got a man open downfield. Temple to the end zone. Touchdown, Bulldogs. Well, that's how you do it, right? You got to mix it up. He's been back there. They expect run, 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 run. So what do we do? We're going to throw it. We've got guys that have gotten open down the seam, and that's a huge play, right? You got to change the possession. Time to take a shot. Let's take a look at this replay and see exactly how he gets open here on this play. So Temple. Just kind of gets up, he just came out from the outside. He just walked through, nobody accounted for him. That's just a really bad breakdown in coverage there for Thornton Academy. And now Portland takes the lead here on a great play and a great call from Sean Green. 59 yard touchdown for the Bulldogs. The extra point attempt is up. And it is good, drilled through by Justin Bouchard. And just like that, the Bulldogs on top, 7-3. And they're going to have to hit on a big pa pass play if they want to win this game. At some point on a third down, uh, Benoit's going to have to air it out and connect with one of these receivers. But it, this is a little bit oversimplified, but you've got three downs. You've got to gain three yards on two of those downs and four yards on another down. It's really as simple as that. And if they can get Sunderland going, then great. But if not, I think they need to get, get Benoit in space a little bit more. We talk about winning the middle eight. And right now, Portland is winning that middle eight. But you have an opportunity to win the next four minutes and make that middle eight kind of a draw here. But if you go out there and you have another three and out, which would be their fifth straight, that's where you start to feel a little bit demoralized, right? Our, our, our adjustments aren't taking hold, and we're not getting that forward momentum we want. Brandon, what are your thoughts on maybe if they try and get to the quick pass game, maybe start getting some perimeter screens and some quick screens, you know, to make that your run game is kind of the outside short passes. Yeah, I agree. You know, quick passes, try to get outside of the Portland defense. Certainly within the teeth of the Portland defense, there's nothing going there in the middle. And this is where Thornton Academy relies on their experience throughout the year. They've played the second hardest schedule in the state of Maine. They've been through these battles. They've been through tough games where it was tough to move the ball before. They played the best team in New Hampshire, in, in Bedford, New Hampshire. I'm sure it's hard to move the ball against them too. So they've had this experience already. And they're only down four. I'm sure their coaches spent half time pumping them back up saying, you know, we got this guy. Second and five coming up. The Trojans continue to work quickly. First first down for Thornton Academy in six drives. Diesel shifted out to the top of your screen. Parody, the fake to him. Benoit, he's got a man downfield. It's Kiesel. It's caught at the 10-yard line. A 43-yard strike through the air. Cole Purvis mentioned you have to go up top, and they do. And I scratch that, is that Kiesel or is it? But it is Kiesel who made the catch. 
Well, good job here. Look at him and getting behind this top layer of the defense. He's at the top of your screen here, and he just sneaks through. That play action frees the linebackers and the safety just enough for him to walk through untouched and wide open. He was one of my players to watch in the pregame, and there he is with the big play for Thornton Academy. They're in business now. This is Harry Bunn's territory for sure for the Trojans. They'll also put 4,400 Boudreaux into the game as well. Huge play, pivotal play. Let's see if they go straight T like they did earlier when they needed the yardage. And also that hard count. Is Portland going to be kind of on their heels a little bit here? I mean, half the distance to the goal, but you don't want to give up the first down. Yeah, it wouldn't be much as far as the yardage, but it would get a new set of downs with Thornton Academy. I mean, it's a blade of artificial turf away from being a first down. Keniston, Bunce, and Boudreau in the backfield from left to right behind Wyatt Benoit. This is a huge play on fourth down. All right, so they didn't get him to jump. Here's the check with me. What are they going to run for a play here? I would imagine you just kind of sneak it here. Bunce. Touchdown, Trojans. Harry Bunce, the short yardage specialist of the six foot, 225 pound senior, has his fifth touchdown of the season, and it's a big one. Well, you called it better than I did on that. It is Harry Bunce territory. We talked about him in the pregame. He's the guy that's going to get you the dirty yards in there. Great blocking up front. Tremendous discipline from Portland initially here on the hard count. They don't jump, and then this is just old school straight T, and they fire right up through there. Big touchdown for Harry Bunce and a lead for Thornton Academy. JP Baez can make it a three point lead. Kick is up, and it is perfect. Like a geek is back in the game. He's out wide as well. They fake the handoff, but oh, it's got some space. To the goal line and in. A 13-yard touchdown, Wyatt Benoit. And the Trojans extend their lead. Well, here they come again with this play action fake to the near side. You can play action in the run game too. And they get, the, they get everybody to step down and step in. And the defensive end discipline that Portland was so good at in the first half has kind of gone away. It's gone the way of the dodo here. Look at this. Just crashing down to the inside. Not very disciplined out there by Rodriguez. who's had a really good game so far. Again, stepping down too far inside. One of the things they did really well in the first half, they didn't do that. Now they have on back-to-back -back possessions in Thornton Academy making them pay. Extra point by J.P. Baez is pretty much automatic. He drills another. One of the best kickers in Southern Maine and maybe the entire state, Baez, has given his team a 17-7 lead, 14 points. In just under nine minutes here in the third quarter for the Trojans. Oh, to the center. Parity in motion. Benoit the keeper. Not much. They lost the football. Coming up with a football, Alcafaji. The Bulldogs get the defensive play when they need it the most. Yeah, Alessandro Rodriguez with this big time stick. Watch him come off the edge and absolutely tattoo Benoit. Right here, boom, pops the ball loose and Alcavaggi is gifted one right in his hands, but that started by Rodriguez, an absolute missile of a shot on a Benoit. First down to the 43 yard line, clock rolling at 45 seconds. End of the third quarter. Temple makes the grab, turns up field. Temple dodging tackles, but a flag flies in. This will come back somewhat. Even though Temple's in the end zone, it's not going to count. Oh, this is a heartbreaker. It's an unbelievable individual effort by Temple, but I think we're going to get a peel back blindside block here around the 46-yard line. But again, great blitz pickup. Watch the blitz pickup here by the offensive line. And then out here in space, let's see. It's going to be a peel back block somewhere in here. I just don't see where it is. That's, oh, it's against Thornton it's Academy. It's against Thornton Academy. That's the first time I've seen a flag in that place go against the defense, the Bulldogs have scored. So I wonder now, here's the question Let's on that, that again. play. Is it, was it a peel back hit on a defensive player onto an offensive player? I was looking for something like that, didn't see it there, but unbelievable effort right there on that touchdown run. Temple, that's a big time one right there. They needed that. Bulldogs right back in it with a shout and can make it a field goal game here. As Justin Bouchard, the freshman kicker, set for the extra points. He's been very good at these over the course of the season. And 
one for one already. How many times do you see that called on the defense downfield like that? The kick is up, and it is good. 17-14, well, the Bulldogs strike back. You got second in Falmouth here. <laughs> Put it in back bay. Yeah, that back bay might be closer to the sticks than that is. Yeah, it's called second down. It says 25, and that's what it looks like. That's about. Benoit flushed. Heads to the sideline and breaks it to the 50-yard line. Benoit could break the whole thing. He's in. No flags. Touchdown, Thornton Academy. Wow, this goes from near disaster to pure elation for Thornton Academy as they were looking around to see if there isn't a flag and they're kind of in disbelief. 61 yards. 66, 66 yards. 66 yards for Benoit. He is one tired kid right now. But take a look at this replay and this is, he's flushed out here. No defensive end pressure here. al Kafaji gets too far inside and then tiptoes around the near sideline. And then a great screen block in there by Foucher and just an unbelievable job by Thornton Academy to overcome the big time penalty and take the lead, or extend their lead rather to 10. They can make it 10 here in the Baez extra point try. And they have done so. Well, what a block by Foucher, too. I'm glad you pointed that out because that's really what gave Benoit the extra step. And if he was stung at all, and he certainly was, but that Braden Wales tackle on the previous play, boy, did he shake that off quickly to bolt downfield. Tremendous run by the junior. Let's take a look at that one more time and pay attention to number 52 on your screen. That's Foucher. And just the job he does here of holding up everything and then out here on the sideline, he does a great job of throwing that block and keeping his hands up. It also looked like over there, there was one other player I didn't quite catch. He just stood up with his hands. I'm not hitting anybody, I'm just in the way. That took Cordell Jones out of the play and Cordell was the last line of defense. First and 15, 4.13 on the clock. They fake to Jones, pressure coming. They had to get rid of it. Is it caught? It is! Intercepted, Brady Kiesel. The senior may have just clinched the gold ball for Thornton Academy. Well, we talked about what he does on the defensive side of the football for them, and watch him underplay this route. Walking over from the middle of the field and then gets there just in time. That's a long way to go to make that play for Kiesel. And in his senior season, in his last game of his career, he just may have sealed up the gold ball for the Trojans. Under a minute to go. Third down and five. Down and distance really immaterial here. The Trojans simply want to hold on to the football. Sunderland across the 30. Looks like he's short of the first down, but it likely will not matter. We're going to have to, will they make them run one more play here? My Epinoit waving yep. the crowd. Evan Hill's over there as well, 87. He's had a great day blocking. The Trojans ready to celebrate. Don't think they have to run another play. They certainly don't think so. And out they come. 0-2 after the first couple of games going into Bonnie Eagle. They won that contest. Lost to Levitt. Lost to Bedford, New Hampshire. Two teams playing for state championships in Maine and New Hampshire, respectively. But this team has won one. Thornton Academy. Another ball for the trophy case. Makes some room in Sacco. They've come out back in the second half to win 24-14. Well, just an unbelievable job and an unbelievable effort here by Thornton Academy this afternoon. Things looked bleak. It was a tale of two halves, and they just didn't have anything going well for them in that first half. They couldn't move the ball. They were committing penalty after penalty, and they came out a house on fire in the second half and did the job they needed to do. After four or five straight three and outs, they go back-to-back -back touchdowns to start the second half and don't look back. But Harry Bunce could add an O to his name, Harry Bounce right now, because he is absolutely just popping up and down. I have not seen a player this excited about a championship in quite some time. I know they all are, but he is really just thrilled about this, the senior. See him here, we've seen before. The victors today. On behalf of the Association, and
for the 11th time in school history. The Trojans are golden. I mean, I, I've watched gold ball ceremonies for years on years, and I still get goosebumps every time I see it. You know, let's, these guys started, oh, there goes the table. Here oh, comes the no, best oh. part. Harry Bunce wasn't tackled easily today. The table almost made one on him. Yeah. And here he comes with a gold ball to the TA student section, who was here in the rain. When it was still pouring, first thing when this game started, and now they celebrate once again.